I think my tweet said one of the best run companies on the planet delivers on top and bottom once again. Yeah. Uh, although, although it was a little light on its guidance, Broadcom. Um, you know, let's talk Hawkonomics. Let's talk a little Hawkonomics right now. Um, you know, companies right. companies up 34%, um, you know, year on year, but about 11% revenue X VMware. So this VMware ad really did make a huge delta to the bottom line. You know, the company, you know, drew an eight, almost uh, $7.156 billion of EBITDA adjusted on the first year on its revenue. And I want you to guess what percentage of revenue this company's EBITDA is, Pat. You know how much I love EBITDA, right? Oh, oh, no, it's incredible. And by the way, their margins are just like, I mean, like 77% gross margins are just like amazing. Well, guess what's left after that? What, what the EBITDA number is. I don't know. Take a stab. Me. Take a stab just for fun. Let's have some fun. As a percent? As a percentage of all of its revenue. How much of its EBITDA? Oh, 20%. I'm going to guess. 60. 60% 60 of its revenue is adjusted EBITDA. So oh, sorry. On, I was thinking of uh, op okay. Netting. Yeah. yeah, dude, yeah. don't worry. It was, it's a, it's a, such a, it's such an absurdly high number that the number you gave is very typical as to where companies land 10 20 30 for a well-run company 60 percent of the company's revenue <laughs> wait 60 percent after r d adjusted ebitda yeah now again the adjustments i don't know how much they're I'm embarrassed out. i've embarrassed myself yeah we can edit that out <laughs> oh, we are live Pat, take a stab what what percentage of their revenue do you think was adjusted ebitda Typically in the industry, it's like 20%, but I'm guessing 60-ish percent. Yeah, let's say that's probably, it actually, good job, Pat. It's 60% on the head. So, you know, the company, you know, continued, uh, it reiterated its guidance of about 50 billion with an adjusted EBITDA of 30 billion next year, Pat. So their guidance was just a little bit below consensus, but it was right there. And of course, you know, the company is continuing to pay down debt, pay a dividend. And the stock has just been high flying, Pat. I mean, I think it crossed uh, $1,350 a share this week. I think it even broke $1,400, which it was trading at like 800 like six months ago. So while, yes, NVIDIA has been the fastest growing, this one has just been slow and steadily gaining about 100% year to date, <laughs> um, or in the last, sorry, year, whole year. Um, just a couple of other items on the company's business. You know, the semiconductor business grew 4%. The infrastructure software business accretive to the VMware was up 153%. So big accretive ad um, with the in inclusion of VMware. And overall, Pat, all we can say is that Hawkonomics work. Hawkonomics deliver. A new thing? Have you, is that, did you just make up another one? I, I'd been talking about it for a couple of weeks now, but I've decided to go all in on making sure that it, on the record, I've never heard anyone else say Hawkonomics, but I'm pretty sure that this is a new way of running a business. Um, I did say it to the board in one of my board meetings, and then I did say it to my leadership team in a meeting that uh, there's something to be said for the way this person, this man runs this company. Sure is. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to just try to add some filler uh, to what you said. So, Kind of some big things here. AI revenue quadrupled uh, year on year at 2.3 billion. I thought that was uh, incredible. But I gotta tell you, software uh, consolidated bookings going from less than 600 million to 1.8 billion to over 3 billion in, in Q2. And by the way, that number was so big that uh, Hawk got a bunch of questions from investors in the call. And basically he was like, we're upselling on VMware, right? It's all about uh, v VMware Cloud Foundation, right? Which is uh, compute, storage, networking, virtualization, right? And I just thought that, I, I love that number is just astounding. And you know that the investors had to do a double take when he when he pulled that out. Um, pretty big, you know, and then get into the semiconductors aside from from AI, it was, it was very similar to what you would expect uh, in, in the industry, right? They uh, sell a lot to Apple and Apple is down. So their wireless revenue was down. Imagine that. Uh, storage industry is down and therefore their storage number was down, 
and so was broadband related to all the carriers, which is down. And we're going to uh, see some very similar uh, similar stuff when we talk about uh, uh, Marvell, though. And I, by the way, uh, final thing, I love when Hawk talks about Tomahawk. He loves talking Tomahawk. Tomahawk is essentially the basis for uh, the Tomahawk. Yeah. Totally. Tomahawk. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Dan. Jeez. God, you're just you're just nailing it today. No, Tomahawk is 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 basically the glue that's pulling all these AI uh, systems together. And guess what? It's off the rail. And they just keep cranking it out, cranking it out, cranking it out, and printing money. So, anyways, stock was down. Whatever. <laughs> I don't care about it. No, for a moment. That's not the business we're in. What does I it mean? mean? What does it mean? I don't even care. Listen, it was a it was a good set of results. It's only going to, you know, this company, 20, 30% of a, of a AI compute bomb is going to be networking. Yeah. And, you know, you're going to need a lot of custom silicon. You're going to need a lot of custom compute. You're going to need a lot of networking and connectivity. I don't think Broadcom sits in a bad con, uh, position on the semi side. And then all the private AI that enterprises are going to need to build to take advantage of their data, it sure seems like uh, VMware Cloud Foundation has the potential to be a good partner for that. So I think whether it's at the mainframe, in the cloud, or down to the silicon layer, um, you know, it's pretty compelling. 